Hello and welcome back to Search Engine Optimization Online. I'm your instructor again, Victor Campos. In the last video, we talked about the client marketing strategy. Now we're going to look at my document, Campos SEO 2 Webmaster Tools. You get that off of Blackboard, of course. So what you want to do is open up that PDF. It's two pages long. The first page is about the Webmaster Tools, Google and Bing. And then the second page is about conversion goals. In this class, we're going to focus on using both Google and Bing's Webmaster tools to help us track our efficacy. How effective are we, uh, are our efforts of SEO? Uh, Google and Bing both give us tools to check how well we are uh, engaging in SEO, social media, blogging, all of that stuff. That's page one of this document. I'm actually going to start on page two. If these tools will show you results, well, we of course still need to talk about attempting tactics, trying to get results. So that's what page two goes on about here, conversion goals. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that point. And I list here a bunch, of which I will detail in just a moment. So there's that buzzword, that jargon of conversion in the world of marketing. A conversion is basically when someone cons converts from something into something else. What that means is, tangibly, a person has not bought my cupcake yet, and I've converted them, they've bought my cupcake. Buying the cupcake was the conversion, it was the goal. It's very easy to say, my goals, my conversions will be sales. But it's actually a lot harder to get sales because there's so much competition, people don't know we exist, and perhaps we're not marketing in the best way. So here I have various ideas to engage in as goals to get you to your ultimate conversion, which is a sale. Before the sale, I will attempt to do as many of these as possible. You don't have to do all of these or engage in all of these tactics, but the more of these that you're aware of and engage in, the more possibility you have of getting found, getting traffic, getting sales, completing those conversions. I'm going to open up a notepad document just so that I can write some notes. And at the same time, I'm going to look at the handout. I will put these notes in Blackboard. All right, so we've got get followers on Twitter. That assumes you have Twitter. Our note here, social media is highly important for modern SEO. Search engine optimization, search engine marketing. Remember we mentioned that keyword on week one. Well, what are you doing besides your website, such as social media, such as Twitter? So regarding Twitter, followers are a captive audience. They have chosen to see your message. When you have classic marketing, your audience is very dispersed. Classic marketing is a billboard on the side of the road, an ad in a newspaper, a jingle on the radio, a TV commercial. That's the classic marketing. Everyone drives by that sign on the freeway. Everyone glances at your flyer in the paper. Everyone sees that commercial. Very few, however, take action. Very few at that moment care about your product when they see it in classic marketing. You may have several people see it, that's known as an impression. So let's back up with a little terminology here. Impression, conversion, CTR. Impression. How many people saw your message? Conversion. How many people acted on your message. My message is check out this amazing cupcake. 
Okay, well, how many bought the cupcake? Impressions versus conversions, which then leads us to CTR, which is click through rate, a simple equation here. Conversions divided by impressions equals CTR. Take the number of actual conversions, which could be a brand new Twitter follower, or a like on a Facebook post, or a share on a Pinterest pin. Take that conversion, take that result, divided by impressions. How many followers do I have? How many people saw that tweet? How many people heard my podcast? Take those numbers, divide them, and then you get a percentage. And often you'll have single-digit results in the CTR, and that's perfectly fine, that's perfectly normal. It's very hard to convince people from a plain old tweet, buy my product. It's hard to convince people from a billboard, buy my product. So if you have single digit CTR value, that's okay. Perhaps we can improve it as time goes on and our efforts increase. But even getting up to the 9% click-through rate, 9% efficiency is still very good because many of us will have 1%, 0.1%, a very low percentage of results. Regarding social media as well, we have to think about the 1% doctrine. Social media is about the 1%, which is 1% of your audience is your true audience. 1% are going to be the ones that actually follow the link to your tweet. The ones that are actually then going to add the product to their shopping cart and the ones that will actually fork over their credit card. It is a very low number and it is a very high bar to get it higher than that. But that's just the reality of this. It's so much easier to comment on a picture, share that link, give a like, than actually buy something or call you for a consultation or hire you. So we have to think in terms of 1% will be the most active, ardent, effective clientele. Therefore, getting back to Twitter, build followers on Twitter because only 1% will be real followers. That is a very high bar that I'm setting. Yes, you may have a great online presence. You may have a result more of 25% CTR or even higher, but it might be very difficult for most people. Um, so the more followers you get, if I've got 100 followers, 1% 1 of 100 is one. One follower will go all the way through from my tweet to buy the product. Therefore, we need to engage in a lot of SEM to bring those numbers up, that CTR number. Next item, get social interactions on Facebook. So Facebook and all the networks have these interactions. Social interactions. They have these things that people can accomplish on social media. If you think about it, every network has this. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Snapchat, etc. They just have variations. There is the like. And in my notes, I should have written it as likes, comments, shares. This little bit different order. This is the order that I would think about them because this is the order of their value. Not that likes are worse than comments. It's just that likes aren't as valuable as comments or shares. There's actually a fourth interaction I'll mention in a moment. But think about it. You share a great photo of your product on Facebook and someone likes it. The end. What else is there? They've moved on to something else. Well, what if instead of liking, or in addition to liking, they also commented and they said, what a great looking picture, so tasty. Okay, that seems to be perhaps a more serious follower. We can then target that follower or figure out the demographics of that follower to then have a real conversion going from a, that's a great cupcake, I love it, to uh, messaging them, I'm glad you like our cupcake, here's a coupon for your first cupcake for free, buy one, get one free. So that uh, shows uh, some more of your true followers. The next level up, shares, that usually means that someone liked your message, your post, your picture, your video so much that they've chosen to spread the message to more people. They've shared it. 
Twitter calls it a retweet, but it's like a forwarding someone's email. You get an email of a great uh, newsletter article, let's say, and you forward it to five more people. Five more people now know about it. More impressions. How many did actually read it? Well, the reading part is the conversion. Getting it is just the impression. So on social media, pretty much every network, we're able to share someone else's message. What I want is people to like my stuff, comment on my stuff, share my stuff. Sometimes comments are also known as replies, but I want those interactions. The likes tell me that my content is resonating with an audience, a target audience that I've developed in the previous exercises. The comment tells me that someone is a little bit more serious about my product so I can reach out to them directly and try to market them directly. It's better than a cold call. And shares is another indicator that someone is very serious about your product so I can reach out to them. The last interaction, the biggest interaction, the best interaction is a follow. Follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, circle me on Google+, follow me on Instagram. They've all got variations of the name, but that's a follow. They've chosen to see your message. That billboard gets seen by a thousand people a day, but only two people actually call because they need a plumber at that moment. Whereas on Twitter, I'm a plumber, but I'm going to reach out to as many people that express an interest in plumbing so that I can build that audience. When they need me, they've got me on call. So I want to get all of these, and I get all of those with good content. We'll talk about good content a little bit later. Get site visits via Google+. This assumes you have a Google+. So I'm going to say, get Google+, ASAP, because it's a head start against your competitors, your local competitors. If you ever do a search on Google, you will get results that are listed on a map. To get on the map of Google, you basically set up a Google Plus page. You can go get that at business.google.com. Set up an account there for your business for free that helps you get the leg up on the competition. So I want to get traffic from a Google Plus page. Well, I need a Google Plus page for free. I get people to my home page so that I can complete more conversions. That's the next item. Get more hits on my home page. So be it Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn, whatever. I want people to come back to my website. Your website, your home page is where you can oftentimes complete your ultimate conversion the easiest. Every social network will let you send a message out about your product. And then when you want to have them buy now, you're not going to buy the product on Twitter directly. You're not going to give Twitter your credit card, really, uh, to buy the product. Uh, you're not going to buy the product directly on Facebook, directly on Pinterest, etc. All of these networks are working on getting that implemented. And the big companies do have access. Macy's, Walmart, etc. Amazon. But we're not Amazon level at the moment. We still need our own website where we have our own shopping cart and we can control the whole process. So I need a website to guide people back there too. The next one, get more shares on my blog posts from my site. This one assumes you have a blog. A blog is a site, could be attached to your main site, your, your main website. A blog is a site where you publish content on a regular basis, usually long-form content. Social networks are the short-form content blogging platforms. I send out a tweet of 140 characters. I put a Facebook post of a couple of sentences and a picture. I share an Instagram photo with a hashtag. It's short-form content. You digest it quickly and easily. Oftentimes you will also need to engage in long-form content, writing articles about your product or brand or business 
or industry or testimonials, whatever, about your business. And this is going to be longer than a tweet, longer than a Facebook post. I teach a class on blogging. You need to look it up in the uh, course catalog when that's being offered. So I can't go into a lot of detail about blogging as well as social media. I can't go into a lot of detail in social media in this class because I teach a class on social media where we go in depth. But some quick tips right here for blogging. I'm going to say blog goals. Lots of people are going to tell you lots of blog goals and they're all right and they're all wrong. It just depends on your business. So here's one starting point as a beginner. 100 words per month. Write a new article of 100 words every month, at least. So you're going to see plenty of other tutorials that'll say, write 300 words weekly. Well, yes, that is better. It's more content. It's more keywords and phrases to help you get found, but it's a lot more work. And if you're busy running your business, payroll, inventory, and now you've got to maintain your website and write an article every week of 300 words, you're going to run out of content, you're going to get burned out, you're going to get disillusioned, and you're going to stop, then it won't help you anymore. So blogging is where you're going to blog, you're going to write articles on a regular basis. The amount and the regularity doesn't matter to some degree. The more you do it, the better. But as a beginner, 100 words per month is a very attainable goal. Your blog posts are articles full of keywords. Those keywords that we developed on a previous exercise, this is one of the places you use them. Those keywords that I figured out that the competition seems to be using, well, I'm going to exploit those keywords by writing articles that really expound on those topics. Again, take the blogging class for more detail, but that should get you started. Write articles to help you get found. That helps your SEO. Get subscribers to my coupon newsletter. This assumes a newsletter. So your newsletter is another spot where you've created a captive audience. Your newsletter is your database of contacts. People chose to give you their email to market to. Don't ever go out and buy a database of emails. Those are probably email accounts that are not legitimate or of people that don't care about your product. You're not going to cold call people randomly um, about what they don't care about at all especially in the digital world, then you'll be labeled a spammer that'll affect your rankings on the search engines and it could be very hard to get out of the that rut of negative SEO. So on your website, you will have an easy way for people to subscribe to your newsletter. What should your newsletter be about? Well, that'll be, that's a little bit out of the scope of our class, but here's some ideas. Send your latest blog post to their inbox. Instead of visiting your site, send them the article directly to their inbox with links back to your website to buy the product. Send exclusive VIP content. Things that you cannot find anywhere on your website or your social media. That's then an enticement for people to subscribe to you. Community building. Use the newsletter for a back and forth conversation with your community, with your customers. In order to convince people to subscribe to your newsletter, don't do this. Subscribe now. Don't set it up so that it's simply subscribe now. Uh, why? What am I going to subscribe to? Who am I giving my email address to? Are you going to sell my email and spam me? No, what you want to do instead, subscribe for VIP content or keep up to date. Subscribe or stay in the know. You don't have to explicitly say subscribe. 
get the point across that they will be subscribing to a newsletter and the benefits simply a subscribe now does not entice people that's not good marketing so some sort of button some sort of system that lets people subscribe if you are a physical location a physical business eventually you want people to visit your physical location so get virtual clients to come to my physical location use the local search feature of a social network to find customers near you the power of social media of marketing of new marketing marketing 2.0 is that you can find people all over the place whereas putting that ad in the newspaper goes out randomly to people that might not be interested so using the search feature of Twitter using the search feature of Facebook Instagram etc I can find people locally each network is a little different on how you do it but each network has a way for you to target a zip code or a city and of course keywords and terms so if I have a hundred followers well some of them are gonna be out of the county out of the state out of the country but some of them are gonna be near you so using the search features of those networks I want to see who is tweeting about a particular topic or on Facebook I can target a particular location that will see my message then those people make them aware that you exist are close by and with some sort of enticement come to the business search zip codes keywords also known as hashtags to find local people you can target to bring them to your shop this of course assumes you've got some sort of local location if you don't have a local location um, this might not be the best tactic for you but it's still useful to search keywords and hashtags and lastly I've gotten that customer who was on Twitter to come to my shop on Main Street to buy the cupcake ultimate conversion achieved you should see that it's a long involved process to get from point a a person follows you on Twitter to point Z the follower visits the store and buys a product that's why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing an emerging term that takes both into account is content marketing and you can read more at that article it's a good article for you to look at because it's got other examples of what you can do to entice people to follow you to check your website and all of that so these notes that I wrote here I'm gonna put them in blackboard so that you can browse them yourself and think about implementing them the more of these that you do the better chance that you can complete that ultimate goal because it's very easy for a person to follow you on social media suddenly it's a lot harder for them to click the button to buy We'll talk about more tactics to get followers and to create content on future videos. For the moment, in this video, we looked at page two of my document. Come back for the next video where we then look at page one of the document and how to set up our webmaster tools.